In this episode, we will be discussing panchayats and their role in development and other concepts related to it. Let us begin with a brief introduction. The word panchayat means assembly, ayat of five panch and raj means rule. Traditionally, panchayats consisted of elderly and wise people chosen by the local community who used to settle disputes between individuals and villages. The leader of the panchayat used to be called mukhya or sarpanch. Generally, the elder most or more senior person would be elected to this position. Looking at the origin and development. We can find that Panchayati Raj institutions as units of local government have been in existence in India for a long time in different permutations and combinations though. In modern India, Mahatma Gandhi was one of the leading advocates of Gram Swaraj, that is, village self-governance where the village would be responsible for its own affairs. Post-independence, Rajasthan became the first state to establish Panchayati Raj in 1959 in Nagore district. Andhra Pradesh soon followed suit and the system in the same year. Balwantrai Mehta Committee was constituted in 1957. It was appointed to examine the working of the Community Development Programme 1952 and the National Extension Service 1953. The committee had recommended three tier Panchayati Raj. The village panchayat should be constituted with directly elected representatives, whereas panchayat samiti and zilla parishad should be constituted with indirectly elected members. Ashok Mehta Committee was constituted in 1977. It was formed to make recommendations to revive and strengthen the declining panchayati raj system in the country. It recommended Two tier Panchayati Raj, Zilla Parishad and Mandal Panchayat. Constitutional recognition to be accorded Panchayats. GVK Rao Committee was constituted in 1985. It was set up to review the existing administrative arrangements for rural development and poverty alleviation programs. Zilla Parishad should be of pivotal importance. Some of the planning functions at the state level should be transferred to the district level planning units. L.M. Singhvi Committee was constituted in 1986. It was set up to prepare a concept paper on revitalization of PRIs, democracy and development. It called for the constitutional recognition of panchayats. It emphasized the importance of Gram Sabha. Tungon Committee was constituted in 1988. It was set up to examine the political and administrative structure in the district for the purpose of district planning. It reiterated the demand for constitutionalization of panchayats. A state finance commission should be set up for the devolution of finances to panchayats. Gardgill Committee was constituted in 1988. The committee was set up to consider how best PRIs could be made to be more effective. Iterated the constitutionalization of panchayats. State Finance and State Election Commission should also be established. It was in 1992 that it was officially established by the Indian Constitution as the third level of India's federal democracy through the 73rd Amendment Act. 24th April is celebrated as Panchayati Raj Day. Now, let us see some of the provisions, or rather the important provisions of the 73rd 
Amendment Act. The Act added a new Part 9 consisting of Articles 243-243-0. The Act provides for a Gram Sabha as the foundation of the Panchayati Raj system. The Act provides for a three-tier system of Panchayati Raj in every state. Seats are reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and chairpersons of the panchayats at all levels are reserved for SCs and STs in proportion to their population. One third of the total number of seats are to be reserved for women. One third of the seats reserved for SCs and STs are also reserved for women. This policy extends to the office of the chairperson at all levels as well. There is a uniform policy with each term being five years. Fresh elections must be conducted before the expiry of the term. In the event of dissolution, elections compulsorily within six months. A five-year term of office to the panchayat at every level. Article 243I provides for the constitution of the State Finance Commission to review the financial position of the panchayat. Article 243K provides for the constitution of the State Election Commission conduct elections to the panchayat. Now, let us discuss the epistemology and related concepts of the Gram Sabha. The Gram Sabha is a body consisting of all the people registered in the electoral rolls who belong to a village within the area of the panchayat at the village level. Gram Sabha is the smallest and the only permanent unit in the panchayati raj system. The powers and functions of Gram Sabha are fixed by the state legislature according to the law on the subject. Now we understand the key features of Panchayat Raj system. The Panchayati Raj institution consists of three levels. Gram Panchayat at the village level, Block Panchayat or Panchayat Samiti at the intermediate level, Zilla Panchayat at the district level. Beginning with Gram Panchayat. The Gram Panchayat consists of a village divided into smaller units or wards. Each ward selects or elects a representative who is known as the Panch or Ward Member. The members of the Gram Sabha elect the Ward Members through a direct election. The Sarpanch or the President of the Grams Panchayat is elected by the Ward Members as per the State Act. The Secretary is normally in charge of the administrative duties of the Gram Panchayat. Block Panchayat or the Panchayat Summit. The Panchayat Samiti acts as the link between Gram Panchayat and District Panchayat. These blocks do not hold elections for the Panchayat Samiti Council seats. Rather, the Block Council consists of all of the Sarpanches from each Gram Panchayat, MLAs, MPs who are also a part of the block. The Executive Officer is the head of the administration section of the Panchayat Samiti. District Panchayat like the Gram Panchayat, the District Panchayat is also an elected body. Chairpersons of Block Samitis, MPs and MLAs are also members of the District Panchayat. Government appoints the Chief Executive Officer to carry out the administration of the District Panchayat. The District Panchayat Chairperson is a political head. Moving on to the roles of Panchayats in development. The primary objective of establishing the third tier of the government is to increase democratic participation, better articulate local needs and priorities, to ensure more efficient use of local resources and greater accountability and transparency. Accordingly, 29 functions have been transferred from the state government to local governments in the rural area. These institutions have been playing an important and pivotal role in several flagship programs of the central and state government, perhaps more in implementation and monitoring. 
Panchayats have the responsibility to prepare plans for economic development. They provide social justice with respect to the subjects as per the law put in place. We will now give focus on the challenges faced by the Panchayati Raj systems. The Panchayat system has not answered the question of political party affiliation and its divisive consequences. Households are identified by their political party affiliations and this influences the allocation of public goods. Not just individual benefits such as food grains, pensions or housing, but also crucial services such as law and order and protection of property. Gram Panchayats, instead of absorbing the impact of this conflict while shielding citizens, become instruments of state control and oppression. Ending our discussion on a positive note with the way forward. Economic reforms should be integrated with planning and implementation through institutions of self-government with grassroots empowerment leading to grassroots development. Panchayati Raj needs to be made the fulcrum of the reform process. Sixth report of 2nd ARC, Local Governance and Inspiring Journey into the Future had recommended that there should be a clear-cut demarcation of functions of each tier of the government. There is a need for bottom-up planning, especially at the district level, based on grassroots input received from Gram Sabha. The centre also needs to financially incentivize states to encourage effective devolution to the panchayats in the functions, in finances and also in functionaries. Training should be provided to local representatives to develop expertise so that they contribute more to the planning and implementation of policies and programmes. To solve the problem of proxy representation, social empowerment must precede political empowerment. Towards the end of the session, there are some films-based questions for practice. That's all for today. Stay tuned for the next video. Stay home and stay safe. To watch our videos in Hindi, 
subscribe to our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS.